The PSAT is just around the corner, making sure that you understand how to solve simple problems faster than utilizing Desmos or your calculator is the right way to go. Before we get started, let's note disclaimer listed below. Okay, so the PSAT is just around the corner, and you might be thinking a problem like this seems simple because all you have to do is factor and FOIL and simplify this expression to get one of these answer choices, which might be the case, but let's take a look at this problem. So I want to note for the PSAT that's coming up you might not see simplistic problems where it just says straightforward let's take the expression and see what's equivalent there might be multiple steps that are involved and so this is a timing factor so let's say for example you went ahead and plug this into desmos and try to find the equivalency it really takes some time to individually chug the problems in so let me give you a little shortcut Let's replace one side, which is equivalent to the other side, because they only have one variable. In this case, they have the variable x. Let's replace it with a number of our choice. Oftentimes, the best number choice is zero, and this is something that you can utilize in your answer choice as well. So I'm going to go ahead and say that x squared is the same as zero, same as x, and x. And then we can just eliminate them. So 7 squared is 49. You can plug that into your calculator to solve and then you can go ahead and say that 4 times 4 is 16 so because it's negative times a positive and you plug that into your calculator that's the same thing as saying negative 16. Now I understand I solved this pretty quickly and that's because I know my squared's pretty quickly faster than Desmos and I would actually suggest that if you really are slow with timing you might find it helpful to memorize or quickly note the squares of the numbers ranging from 1 all the way down to 10 just so you're not plugging it in every time and wasting a couple of extra seconds. So with that being said, let's say that we plug this in and we solved, we would say that it's around 33. Now notice our answer choices. Let's go ahead and substitute this for zero, which anything to the fourth, fifth, etc. that is of the zero par, uh, point. So for example, if I say zero to the fourth or zero to the fifth, we could say that's just going to be zero, right? Like we know that's going to be eliminated. By that, if we do the same thing with a squared, then the same thing. Those are going to be eliminated if we take that and substitute zero. So we have zero plus zero, and then we just are left with our answer choices. So the best answer choice is B. A problem like this is because the answer we solved is B. 33 and then we see here that it's 33. I know I took some time to solve this problem because I wanted to slow it down for students who are reviewing this for the first time but once you get into the pattern of understanding these little tricks or tips when you see a squared or root to some power you'll see that it's to the zero and substitute it in and actually get an answer pretty quickly. Hope this helps. One of the trends that we've noted for the digital SAT that we believe is going to also cover in the PSAT is the idea or concept of having a topic that is being tested on, but you have to do it in multiple steps. So for example, you see here, this looks like a percentage-based problem, specifically percentage increase or decrease. So first it says that there is a number P 80% greater than the number Q and then they say the number Q is 60% less than 150 and they want you to know what is the value of P. So it looks like you're just taking a look at the value of P but instead you're expected to do two parts because you have to go backwards. So it says Q is 60% less than 150. So what they're trying to say is Q equals 150. This is what we're starting out with. And they say that from there, we're subtracting a certain amount. And so that becomes hard because you think to yourself, maybe they're talking about subtracting, but they're not. They're talking about percentages. Remember this. So they're saying 150 is the initial amount. And when you have 150 amount, the way that you would deduce how the percentage that you would take off or the percentage that you add on is you have to multiply. So we're going ahead and saying 150 times not 60% but 100 minus that 60% or 0.40 and how I came across 0.40 just to recap is it 
that's 100 that is subtracted from the 60, which gives you 40. And then if you convert the decimal to a percentage or percentage to a decimal, it's going to be 0 0.40. So it's reversed. When we go ahead and multiply that together, that's going to be 60. Now, is that our final value? No, it's not. Remember, we're looking for the value of P. We only have the value of Q. So we have to think to ourselves, what is going to be P? So P is 80% greater. So it's 100% percent plus the 80 or 1.80. Once again, the way that we attained 1.80 is we took the 100% out of the 80 and put it two decimal places to the left, giving 1.80 because it is, in fact, a percentage converted to a decimal. We're going to go ahead and times that by our understanding of the original value, which happens to be 60 because we're going backwards. It's Q is less than 60% less than 150. But then for P, we're saying it's 80% greater than the number Q. So what was Q? That was 60. Going ahead and calculating this, we get 108, which means that our final answer is going to be 108. Let's talk about how we would solve this problem. Firstly, they give you a table and they're asking you to compare volume, which is V to the third power, and compare it to surface area, which is S to the second power. Now to note, they're asking you to find the value of K, which they let you know is a constant. So basically you have two spheres and you have two sets of volumes and two sets of surface areas where you're trying to find one. So this should be a big ding, 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 ding to go, okay, we're talking about ratios here. We're talking about the proportion and the relationships between spheres A and spheres B. But here's the thing, for the new digital SAT or for the SAT or even the PSAT as we're talking about it, they're going to expect that you think that it's not a straightforward problem. You have to think in terms of what they're asking for. It's not straightforward where they're asking for you to set up a proportion because the values of the cube root and the second root really play part. So what I mean by that is if I take the volume of B and compare it to the volume of A, you could flip these if you want to. It's just easier for me to take a look at as long as you keep everything proportional. So everything for me now will be the B on the top and A on the bottom. I'm going to compare it to the value of 972 pi over 280 pi. And that's taken from the volumes that were provided. If I reduce these and produce these in Desmos and go ahead or your graphing calculator and hit fraction to get to the most reduced form, I end up getting 27 over 8. Okay, now we have to go ahead and say that we take these numbers and we take it to the third power because it's not just B over A, it's B over A to the third power. So because of this, I have to go ahead and take the square, cube, root, cube root of both sides to essentially get B B over VA, because that's not what we were solving for. We were essentially solving for the volumes of both of these values. We want to find just B over A. So to do that, I go ahead and get the reduced form by taking the cube root of both sides, making sure to set parentheses where I need to, and I end up getting 3 over 2. So now I have the reduced fraction. Not the reduced fraction of the volume, but the reduced fraction of the sphere itself. Specifically, the radius, because if you look at volume, we're taking a look at radius because they're going to have the same radius. Now that I have the radius proportion and not the volume proportion, I want to note that here and note that now I have to take this and place it for my surface area proportion. So I need to make sure that this is now squared. When I go ahead and do this, I get 9 over 4. So if I have my surface area of A, we could say that it's proportionate 9 over 4. So surface area 
of 144 pi times my fraction 9 over 4. Plug this in and I get 324 pi. So that is going to be the value that I'm looking for. So the best answer here is A. So that is the value K, which is the surface area for B, by multiplying 9 over 4 times the surface area of A. Appreciate you ratting along for our cosmic journey. If today's May Shade brought you the knowledge that slops, make sure to hit that like button to boost that signal. Subscribe if you're locked in for our next watch. And don't miss the entry. It's got all the goods for AP Bio, PSAT Math, and SAT Math. Before I sign out, make sure you're all in one orbit and diving in. Killing out. Till next time. <laughs>